My name is James Bratton. Uh, I'm a screen printer and illustrator. I run a small print shop out in Northern Missouri, and during the day I also run a sign shop. I started making art really at the same time everybody does uh, as a really small child. Uh, I just never grew out of it. Um, a lot of family kind of tried to push me out of it, uh, but I decided pretty early on that I wanted to make things, visual things for a living. Um, and that kind of blossomed in middle school. I got really into doing large scale posters. I became the, the go-to guy in class that people would want in like, for the group projects for, for making the, the final poster. Um, found out to my uncle that's actually something you can do for a living, which uh, kind of focused me in, in high school a little bit into getting into graphic design, which then got me into illustration. Um, and those things kind of combined into uh, making posters, and that became my focus. And naturally, that kind of blossomed the want to actually physically make my own poster, not just design them, and that led me to screen printing. Um, which of all the things I've done has been probably what I've enjoyed the most as far as the media making portion of things. Been cranking out screen prints for, for bands, for political organizations, making t-shirts, posters, stickers, buttons, pretty much anything flat. Um, I'll give it a shot. I just did some wedding invitations for some family friends. That was a lot of fun. Um, um, as far as who or what got me into it, I guess, I said, I've always kind of been into it, but the one that really focused me was my, uh, my uncle. He had kind of a similar trajectory in his life and uh, is a sign shop owner. I like, I like making things that make people smile. I like people to look at it and go, oh, that's neat. Um, I've got two little kids, a six-year-old and a, just about a year and a half-year-old. Um, a lot of the stuff I do is very influenced by them and they can bear into. Um, a lot of my, my silhouette works started as ways to kind of decorate my son's room or to make shirts for him when he was little for things that he wanted. Because um, he's a very strongly opinionated young man and um, oftentimes he wants things that don't exist out in the world so we have to make them together. But that's been cool because that means he's gotten to uh, He's had the opportunity to join me in the studio and actually make things with me. And at six years old, he's actually a pretty, pretty efficient press man. Um, my goal is before he's 10 to be able to retire from making things. Like I can just design the stuff and then I can pay him as allowance to make things for me. <laughs> uh, materials. Uh, that is a, a great and varied question. And it depends on whether or not we're at my day job, like we are now, or we're in my basement doing stuff. Um, the sign shop window in the day, we, we will print on a lot of different things. Um, this here is our laser engraver, and we use it to engrave plastic, acrylics, wood, metal, uh, glass, I've done wine bottles, um, I've done leather wallets. This, the, the list is pretty huge. Um, printers in the back, we got a big flatbed printer that we can do. You know, corrugated plastic on, banner, different kinds of vinyls for doing stickers and, and vehicle graphics. Um, but me personally, the stuff I like working with in my studio at home, um, I'm a huge print media guy. Obviously, I'm a sign shop. Um, but specifically, I like I like the feel of, of older papers. So I'm really into right now printing on old book pages. And I got into this five or six years ago when my son was born, um, and I kind of fell into it by accident. Um, but something about taking taking pages from a book that nobody really wants to read anymore is probably just going to wind up getting trashed. And using those as my media of choice, kind of giving them a second life, um, that's still in the visual aspect, it, it's been something I really enjoy. And it gives my, way, my work a way to be a little more individual than it would be normally, because the big thing with screen printing is you're making copies of things. So I might make 20 pieces and they all look exactly the same, except since I'm printing on these book pages and sold sheet music and stuff, the way that image interacts with the existing text on the page, they all feel a little different, they all look a little different, they're all weighted a little different. The interplay between the lights and the darks is different on each one. So I have that advantage there where, yeah, I've got 20 of the same prints, but each one of them is different. And it's a lot of fun doing shows and doing craft festivals and stuff and seeing people kind of pick up on it, like, oh, I really like this. And they're sort of coming from the stack and they're like, oh, I really like this one. And they'll put out four or five or six of the same print, the exact same image of these prints. But because of the way the text works behind it, they all look and they feel different, and now they've got a decision to make, and now they want to talk to me about it. 
there's a conversation we get to have uh, back and forth and interplay between me and the, the consumer um, that I don't think would really happen if it was just reprint stuff. It was just on a blank page. They'd be like, oh yeah, no, I like this one. How much is it? End of story. But now we get to talk about like, oh, why'd you choose these pages? Uh, is this book specific to this print? Um, did this mean anything to you when you were doing it, or did you just pick pages at random? Um, so that's, that, that, that conversation would be nice to have. Um, pieces I'm working on right now, and stuff that I'd like to start soon. I, uh, I'm working on a bunch of uh, figure prints again. Um, I like to do a series of those a year, um, usually six to ten prints. Um, I try to keep small runs, 20 prints or less. Um, I got the book they just like to put out already, and I've about a third of the way, I think, through designing the prints that I want to do. I've got four done. And I, I'd like to keep it around 10. I may go 12 this year. I've um, still got a lot, of, a lot of sketches that I like. Um, or stuff that I want to start after that. And I've been saying this for a long time, but um, I want to do some Victorian children style silhouette pieces. Um, I'm really I'm really big in like the old silhouette cameos. Like you go to antique stores and you find little like, you know, four by six, five by seven pieces of glass that have um, a really intricately painted background, but then the front of it, painted on the back of its glass, are these really just stark black silhouetted kids. Like kids will swing, and down in the park, um, and it's just black silhouette, but the line work and the detail there is so intricate and so well done that if you look at it, you, you're looking at a page of the storybook. Like your mind immediately goes to that place and fills in the information and it starts telling you a story. Um, and I want to play with that. I've actually got, uh, I, I got from a friend some, some old, like 50, 60 year old books that their grandma had given them um, just when she was cleaning out the house of old like Victorian children's tales and stuff. Uh, the type's a little bigger and a little chunkier than I like to work with, but I think for the project I'm thinking of, I think that'll work well. And I think the fact that the stories and the books are from the point in time that I'm trying to call back to visually, um, I think that will, that will kind of help that. I think kind of get more cohesive. Uh, I like the world to just look nicer. Like that's kind of that's kind of become my modus operandi. That's become my, my artist statement, I guess. That's why I moved back to Columbia. Uh, ultimately, came back here because I wanted to look better than it does. Columbia's cool town. Columbia's got cool stuff. Columbia's got cool people. Um, Columbia could look better than it does. And then all I have to do is take it off here. I'll cut it down. Roll it up, and then the way it's getting this is gonna bring me a uh, 16 by 20 frame at some point in time to stretch it around. Uh, so I'm gonna stretch it, just table it. So I have a piece ready to hang on the wall. recreating a couple of the portraits that hang in the governor's mansion. Um, they wanted to get them remade a smaller scale to uh, have it an office here in Columbia. And so we ran those. And uh, yeah, that worked out really well. size of this piece is going to be 16 by 20. Um, but when we make it, we have to account for the fact that on a piece of canvas like this, you've got to wrap around to the back to staple it. And a lot of places will just leave that extra, you know, however many inches white around the finished piece. Which I guess, I mean, if that's what you're after, that, that looks fine. 
but to me, when I see ones like that, it always just looks like it is some um, cheaply made, mass produced kind of piece of ephemera. Whereas the is calling this, like the actual print here is only 16 by 20, so there is two inches of extra space all the way around this. So that means that when I wrap this canvas, the image is going to go, it's going to continue uninterrupted all the way around the edge of the back. So it's going to look like a more finished piece. It's not going to look like somebody just bought a piece of canvas at Hobby Lobby or Michael's and you know, ran it to the printer or something. Yeah, I just think we can get a nice finish to it. But there she is. Just the culmination of all that, uh, all that power, muscle, and technology there. Standard old school canvas, double primes, white gesso on it. Um, I've, I've actually painted on this stuff before. The uh, whatever chemical they use to get here it just doesn't seem to affect oil paints or coats at all. So, if you want some canvases. <laughs> otherwise, it's just gonna go to my workshop at my house. And my son will probably paint on it. That's what I do, that's how I do it. And I just have to come home to visit friends and family, and I don't want to come home and be depressed. Like, I want friends of mine who did those moves to come home and go, holy crap, look at this place, what happened here? And I can go meet, what happened here? I made shit look cool. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I am, that's what I'm about, that's me.